Ricochet Robots by Alex Randolph is a bit of a classic game. It's uh, It was first published in 1999, and there have been several editions over the years, several new editions, including one that is coming out very soon from uh, Z-Man Games, or Z-Man Games, um, and uh, that's either out now or, or coming very soon. Each edition has introduced minor changes, either to components or the rule set, but essentially the game is the same. It's a, a puzzly game. Um, it's it, th 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 This box where it shows these robots um, might make you think of Robo Rally or something like that. I think that's the common thing that people make a connection with when they first see it. But in actual fact, the game plays nothing like that. I've always felt it was a little bit missold, really, with this sort of uh, sci-fi, slightly sort of chaotic-looking theme, when in actual fact this is a very slow, thinky, a very serious game. Um, and that's not to say it's a bad game at all. It, it, I think it's a fantastic game. But... Um, but it, it certainly isn't what it first appears. One of the major selling points of the game is that it's, it plays from one player, so you can play it solitaire, up to infinity. That's what it says in the box. So you can have any number of players. And I've heard of people playing this in conference halls with a board portrayed on a, you know, on, a, on a screen and then hundreds of players all looking at the screen and trying to work out the solutions. So essentially, it's a solitaire exercise, but you're trying to solve the puzzle quicker than anyone else. Um, which means there's, there's not a huge amount of interaction in the game, but there is tension there. Uh, and, and, and so that actually works very well, although it is essentially group solitaire. So let's have a little look at what the game's all about. And then I've already told you a little bit about what I think, but I'll come back to you and, uh, and, and, and let you know a little bit more. So here is the board laid out for Ricochet Robots. The board is essentially made up of four pieces. My edition is helpfully called the original version on the front of the box. So I know that there are changes in subsequent editions, but uh, I haven't actually seen them, so I won't be able to tell you too much about those. In my edition, we connect the board together using this plastic piece, and that holds everything together. And the rules tell me that with different combinations of these four boards, we can make 96 different arenas in which our robots here can bounce around and uh, try and achieve their objectives. So these are the robot pieces that we have in the game. These are the ricochet robots of the title. We have them in four different colours for the standard game. And then there's this silver uh, robot and there's no real reason not to include him I, I always think so he's included as well as a sort of additional extra now there's also these tokens which are the starting points for the robots that's just so that if I make a mistake when I'm moving him I can always find where he started off and so these starting tokens would be placed around the board before you began and so we might have a situation like this or something like that the, the, the silver robot has a silver disc that he starts on. And then the game is going to set us little tasks. Now the tasks are always to get to one of these positions and you need to get the color, the robot of the corresponding color to the position. So you would draw a tile, there's a whole uh, a token, there's a whole bunch of tokens here. You draw one randomly and that would tell you what you've got to achieve. So in this instance, yellow has got to get to the yellow star token. So uh, where's our yellow star? It's over here um, in this corner here. So we're going to have to get yellow to this token. And the players are then going to try and work out a sequence of moves that will get the yellow robot there uh, in the quickest number of moves. And they're doing that um, against each other. Now when one person declares the number of moves that he can do it in, this timer is turned over, and then the other player has an opportunity to try to do it in fewer moves. Um, so, for example, if I could say, well, I can get from here to here in six moves, then we turn over the timer, and the other players try and do it in five moves or, or, or fewer. And, uh, and that's the basics of how the game works. Now, the robots, they always move in a straight line, um, so and, and they don't stop until they hit a wall. So that would be one move, for example. He's shooting all the way along there. Or I could do the equivalent and shoot all the way along here for one move, and I stop at the wall, or I would stop at the board edge. Okay, so I might go here for one, and then I might go here for two. So I've got to change directions, and I've got to go off at a right angle. I can't just bounce back on myself. So I could go up there for two, and then I'd come along here for three, 
and then down here hit this silver robot for four, along here for five, down here for six, along here for seven, and at this rate I'm never going to make it to this spot here. So what you commonly have to do is move a combination of robots in order to get the person, the, the, the robot to that position. So I might for example go one to move the green guy over here and then two, three, four, five and he's achieved the goal in five. I would declare five, turn over the timer and the other players now would have to try and do it in four or less. Now, this is the reason that any number of players can play this game, because you could have any number of players sat around looking at this board, trying to figure out the, um, the, 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 the correct solution, now, or the quickest solution. The, the game is essentially customizable. You can play it in any way that you want. You know, you play to a set number of these, achieve a certain number of them. First player to achieve that number wins the game. And the rules suggest, I think, eight you want to win eight rounds if you're, if you're playing two player, um, for three players you want to win six rounds, and so on. But you can choose, and the rules say, you can choose to, um, to, 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 to alter those rules according to your particular play style. I know that some versions of this game also have diagonal walls on some sides of the board, so that if, you, if this was a diagonal along here, you would hit it, and immediately bounce off and come down here, and that would only cost you one move as opposed to two. My boards don't actually have that on them. Um, so there's various different ways that you can change things up. Uh, there's a token here which uh, represents this is, is represented on this space on the board up here, and that one means any robot could get there. Um, so you, you want to move any robot into that space. Now the the silver robot. He, he doesn't have a space corresponding to him, so it's never a case of trying to get the robot into a particular space. He's usually used for blocking and, and, and filling up gaps and, 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 and giving an obstacle for the ro other robots to bounce off in order to get them into the position that they need to go to. I think Ricochet Robots is a, a mini masterpiece, really. A, a bit of a classic, okay? It's, it's not right up there with the best games ever, but there's nothing else like it. It's so clever and it's such an unusual experience. It's very different to practically every other game that I play. Um, in Ricochet Robots, uh, well let me tell you first, this game is difficult. It's really, really difficult, really hard. And the first time I played it, I'm constantly checking the rules, going, are we playing this right? Because this seems really hard. But no, it is just difficult to get your head around. That said, I'm sure other players will look at the board and go D -d 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 four and, and just be brilliant at it. And if you played it against those players and you struggle, then maybe you're not going to have a good time. But when I play this, I largely play it two player. And when we play it, we sit and we stare at the board. And we rub our chins. And we can be like that for well, it seems like half an hour, but it's probably two or three, four, five minutes just staring at the board, not speaking to each other. If anyone tries to speak, oh, no, 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 hang on, hang on, I'll forget, I'll forget. As you're trying to work out your moves. And then someone declares how many moves they can do it in, and they say, uh, 23. <laughs> then the other player goes, oh, okay, the timer goes over. They've got to try and do it in 22 or less. Now, it's really difficult, you know, um... And I'm sure we're getting better the more that we play it. And so now, yeah, okay, there are times where you can do it in six or do it in five or even do it in, you know, very occasionally in two or three. But a lot of the game is staring at the board, not talking to each other. And that is an unusual experience. And yet it's really tense. It's really tense because you know that that other player could declare at any time. And you can see when you're figuring it all out, you can see when you're getting close you can be thinking, right, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. I haven't quite got it, but I'm nearly there. And then your opponent declares it and you think, oh, wasted. You know, all that thinking is wasted. Um, I think it's a fantastic game, uh, Ricochet Robots. I think if you're looking for something exciting and thematic and lively and chaotic, and basically if you're looking for something which, uh, look, which, which plays like the picture on the box looks, then this probably isn't it. But if you're looking for a game that you can really sit down and mull it over and, and play and think about it, and with a big group as well, you can play this with any number of players, 
um, then Ricochet Robots is a very good choice. Now I've heard that the latest edition is rather expensive and there isn't a great deal in the box, um, certainly in my edition, I haven't seen the latest edition, but um, there isn't a lot here to warrant a huge price tag. But the, the amount of play that you could get out of it certainly might. Now I would mention at this point that there is an, another game which is based on Ricochet Robots. This came out in 2012. It's called Mutant Meeples. It's by Ted Olspock. Um, and this is heavily based on Ricochet Robots and it adds in a whole load of new features. Um, so I would certainly say have a look at this game before deciding whether you want to buy Ricochet Robots or Mutant Meeples. And I'm going to produce a video, um, which you should be able to find fairly soon, which will discuss the differences between those two and hopefully help people to come to a decision about which one they want to buy. So that is Ricochet Robots by Alex Randolph.